everyone welcome back to the channel it's your boy dead on dave and by that wonderful intro by the one and only ken morrison you know who's here and if you now if you didn't know who it was you can see him on the screen because he is bold and beautiful and arabic it's the magnificent that's what we have to call him now the magnificent matt kizar how you doing mr matt i appreciate you joining me right here on five random oh. questions Thanks for having me, and you guys are going to listen to my awkward, nasally Canadian voice for the next 20 minutes. So, <laughs> congratulations. We all win in life from that, so that's exciting. Uh, if you've been paying attention, you've seen that we've gone ahead and basically gone through the entire shot from the point team in five random questions, except for uh, Tommy C. himself. And uh, most of that's out of design, I mean, other than... Not being able to link up with Tommy because he's so busy now. Now he's in so hot demand. No time for me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I purposely saved Matt for the end. Uh, I have this fascination with Matt Kazar. I mean, look at him for one. He's a, just a gorgeous hunk of man meat. Look at this kid. He absolutely fascinates me. He's the most awkward human being I think <laughs> I've ever met, which... Most mats tend to be on the internet. I don't know why that's Take the that case. as a compliment. <laughs> it's a math thing. It's uh, I was screwed. My parents decided to call me Matt instead of Jeremy. That's they had what at least a good uh, Pearl Jam song if you would have had Jeremy. So that would have been something. Yeah. Instead, I have a good Kenny Morrison song. So. <laughs> yes, you do. And it's quite glorious. <laughs> yeah. This is not a question on the random five, but... Honestly, honestly, what do you think of that song? I, I really want to know, what do you really think of that song, Matt Can't Get Laid? <laughs> oh, I love it. The harmonies, the rhythm, it's excellent. When I'm an old man, I want to gather around an apple tree or something and make my grandkids listen to it. And Play see like if an they're acoustic ashamed. version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see if they're ashamed or really proud. There you go. Your, your, your yeah. grand, you mean your adopted grandkids? <laughs> yeah, my adopted grandkids. <laughs> I still won't get laid at that age. Exactly. So. <laughs> I don't know how you're not swimming in vagina, but I don't know, man. Ooh. Like, if I would have looked like you when I was your age, oh, my God. I would have a small family by now. Like, oh, I have a small family. But, I mean, I would have a ridiculously large family. I'd have a baseball team. Because look <laughs> at you, man. How could anybody? If you're not getting laid, it's because you're screwing it up. <laughs> You're too good I'm looking. screwing it up big time. <laughs> I go up to the woman and I just say the perfect combination of shit words. Yeah. That turns them off. It's and pretty wonderful. I guess that's why everyone thinks I'm gay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty damn wonderful, man. I yeah. absolutely, uh, I, I love seeing your mishaps in love life. Uh, for the people who may not be completely familiar with Mr. Kazar, where do we know you from? Who is Matt Kazar? You know me from Shot from the Point. I'll give you my life story here, my life story in a nutshell. So I was born in Quebec, Canada. For those of you who don't know, it's the only province in Canada that speaks French because we have to be different. <laughs> I was born and raised speaking English and Arabic. I didn't know there was such thing as French. I thought the only two were English and Arabic. So when my parents enrolled me in French high and French preschool, pardon me, I was like, what is this alien language? <laughs> they don't laugh like ha ha ha. They laugh like ha ha ha. They, oh, I can just imagine all the kids sitting there with a little cigarette yeah. in their hands. Like, ha ha ha. Like, yeah. oh God. Cigarettes in their vertical striped uh, black and white t-shirt and their baguette <laughs> over their shoulder. Or I joke. I love Quebec people. They're my best friends. I joke. But... <laughs> So my preschool was horrible, couldn't speak the language, 
And long story short, I pissed myself. That's wonderful. So it, let's fast forward to high school. Is your school. life basically just Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown? Because that's what it feels I mean, I know that actually took place in France, <laughs> but still, that's what it feels like. It's like <laughs> yeah, my life, people have told me they want a cameraman to follow me. Because there's so many interesting, interesting things that happen. I'm sure. I'm yep. sure. So we're fast forwarding. <laughs> Where are we fast forwarding to? We're fast forwarding to high school. <laughs> this is where shit gets real. Since I'm Arabic, I was so much hairier than everyone else. <laughs> so in gym class, I had to pretend to piss every time. And I go in the stall and I change in the stalls. Because oh, I didn't God. want people to see my hairy chest. Oh, look at that. It's like, oh, God. That, Matt, that's... Oh. I can't. It's like a scene from Teen Wolf. What the hell? It's, on the bright side, it keeps me warm. That's in true. In the cold winters. You have insulation. That's true. That's a good point. Insulation. <laughs> so I wasn't the most popular guy in high school. Plus, I was pretty fugly. I weighed <laughs> over 200 pounds at one point. And... Uh, I basically ate lunch in the bathrooms. Oh, man. Because I had no friend. And that sucked because it often smelled like shit. And I'm trying to eat, but the shit smell would get in my mouth. <laughs> but yet you kept eating. <laughs> I kept eating. <laughs> well, I'm glad you were able boy. to uh, power through all of that and get to this point. Because uh, yeah. we love having you around, man. And I do particularly because I, I love the misadventures of magnificent Matt, it's it really is. That should be the name of your YouTube channel, by the way. The Misadventures mm -hmm. of Magnificent Matt. I want to check when that becomes famous, too. By the way, All I'll right. give you credit for the name. Sweet. Well, it, credit. Yeah. If you mean by credit, money, then that's I'll accept. <laughs> All right. So here's the deal. I don't know if you've seen this before. This is how the whole thing works. I ask you five questions, whatever five questions come to my mind, and you answer them as long as you satisfy me you warm the cockles of my heart with all of your wonderful Ooh. answers you get to flip it on mm -hmm. me at the end and ask me any question you like and as on my honor as a united former united states soldier i will answer it to the best of my ability sound return fair? the favor yeah return the favor yeah. <laughs> this is not a 68 where <laughs> you do me and i owe you one no we do it right now <laughs> it's it's a straight yeah. up 69 of questions it's a wonderful yeah. it's a wonderful experience if you accept good <laughs> sir I accept. All right. Well, let's jump right into it, man. Question number one. You kind of already alluded to this a few mm -hmm. seconds ago. So mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you the question I know people are really, truly wondering. Is Matt being a virgin bullshit? Are you really a virgin? And if you are, what's the furthest you've ever gotten with a girl or guy oh god <laughs> and does truth or dare count because no not really you get gen. no dare <laughs> oh yeah okay. truth or dare counts oh you're talking okay. like yeah yeah absolutely yeah. okay jeez what was the first part of the question sorry are you I... truly a virgin is that is that real or is that part of the whole okay. mad mystique ah so the thing is I make this character called Mecha Matt. And, <laughs> and if I were to reveal this, it kind of besmirched my character because I'm, I'm revealing the truth. Uh-oh. But I am actually a virgin. <laughs> 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 I, like right now, Tommy sees watching us going, you son of a bitch! It better not be no! So you just gave yeah. Matt, uh, you just gave Tommy C a heart attack. So that's wonderful. So mission one accomplished. Yeah. So all right. So, so we've established that you're a virgin. That's a hundred percent true. Yeah. Well, like, how far also, have you gotten? Well, the thing is, let me just elaborate on the last part. Go ahead. Most guys my age, they wanted to give up their V card so fast, and I was like, I'd rather go home and play Donkey Kong. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's Donkey not. Kong. I'm not gay. I'm not gay. It's just at the bottom of my priority list. It'll happen one day. Yeah. So, <laughs> the furthest I've ever gotten with a girl. Yes. Or guy, no judgment. Okay, so off the top of my head, um, this girl in my high school was being really, really 
Can I swear? Yes, of course. She was being cunty with me. <laughs> really not a nice person. And I went upstairs in the chapel to play piano alone. And what I think that happened is that another friend told the cunty girl, dude, why are you being such a dick to him? So she felt bad. So she followed me up to the chapel. And while I was playing Beethoven, she grabbed my cock, which oh. is not part of the song. No, it's not part of the song. That, no. As far as I know, that was never written in the music sheet. Yeah. No, it wasn't. So also a lot of it was in truth or dare because that's when they didn't have a choice. And, <laughs> you know, people dared me to kiss girls. I did it. People dared me to kiss guys. I did it. Oh, you know, shit. Just, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's something I'm not proud of, but what are you going to do? And what are you going to do? What are you going to do indeed? Well, at least somebody has touched your penis and that's a good thing. I'm, I'm happy to hear yeah. that. I mean, my it's clothed a, penis, I yeah, might your add. clothed penis, but, but still, I mean, to happen in a chapel whilst yeah. pounding out Beethoven, that's, that's yeah. an experience right there. I like that. So it's, when, it's classy. Whenever I play that song in my house, <laughs> when I get to the part where she grabs my cock, I just randomly get a boner. In yeah, the song. <laughs> for the rest of your life. That's that's hundred <laughs> percent. That's what's gonna be. Oh god, what a predilection! That's fantastic. Okay, good answer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we've set the tone now. All right, question number two. Now I don't know if this is something you necessarily wanted to be public knowledge. I know Tommy's talked about it before, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah. Um, something. That not everybody may know about you is that you are on your way to a nice upstanding career in the field of pharmacy. You're going to become a pharmacist with everything else that you do, man, playing piano, being this hockey savant uh, with the, all the things you know about that sport, your podcasting resume that's starting to grow all these things. You seem to have a passion for sports radio as well. Why pharmacy? I, I, I'm always trying to wrap my mind. You seem like a guy, literally, and I'm not bullshitting you here. You seem like a guy who could literally do whatever he wants to do. So why pharmaceuticals? Because I, I, I question that. Yeah. So my two main interests, I would say, the top two would be hockey and music. Yeah. They're interchangeable. So this this TV show that we have in Quebec it's called the antechamber. I, I don't know. Who I've heard made of up it. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically these four guys. They sit on these really comfy seats, and ironically enough, they drink wine and they talk about hockey. So I always looked at that and said to myself, "There it is. That's my dream job. That's my dream job." Yeah. And my other dream job was to become like someone who composes music. Like music for movies, scores, all of that. Ah, John Williams up in the house, yeah. John Williams. And I was this close to doing it. Really? But I I had to have a really, really long talk with my dad. Where he basically said, you can do whatever you want. But out of the thousands and thousands and thousands of people who want to go on sports radio, how many actually make it? Oh. There's always going to be someone better looking someone who speaks better, oh. someone who knows his shit better. So at first I was hurt, yeah. but then I thought about it and I was like, he's probably right. If I don't make it in that, what else am I going to land on? So oh. that's why I decided to go into pharmacy, which is I, I experienced working in a pharmacy. I shadowed a pharmacist and I absolutely loved it. Oh, that's good. It's, it's really one of the best things I've ever seen. And I know I'll have that like insurance that I don't have to rely on anyone and I won't likely get fired ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, those, that's a good reason. So you're not necessarily yeah. circumventing or, or giving up on the dreams of ma of being no. a sports radio guy, but pharmacy yeah. is, is a perfect way for you to make sure you're not, you know, homeless. So <laughs> yeah. Like my brother wants to become a director mm -hmm. and, or an actor, something like that. We both know that's not happening, but <laughs> he wants to become an actor. My dad told him, get a good job like pharmacy or something like that. And once you get it, 
that's when you can venture into becoming an actor. So if you fail, you can always land back on another job. Yeah. It's that's not a bad reasoning to have. It's not a bad rationale to have. A lot of yeah. people will get a little angry at that when they hear a parent say that to somebody. But your dad is being very pragmatic, very it's smart true. about it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But at the, also, you don't want to be in your 40s, your 50s and, and asking the question of what if, you know, um, what I like to say to people is if you tell someone your dreams and they don't laugh at you, you're not dreaming big enough. So mm -hmm. it's, I think you can have it all. I think you're a guy who could do, probably do it all if you really wanted to. So I hope you don't give up on that dream and you end up do continuing to pursue it because you got something special there, Matt. So. Yeah, right. I won't, I won't at all. It's uh, it's, it was an interest of mine. It will always be an interest of mine and I'll, I won't forget it. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Good, good answer. I like that. Yeah. Question number three. Um, this has been not the easiest year for you. I mean, you know, we, we, we all know that it's been a, a, a rough year for you. So what has helped you get through not just this recent rash of difficulties, but just any hard times in your life? Cause you're, you're a creative guy and creative people usually tend to have interesting ways of dealing. And it's almost, um, a complete opposite of what they usually do. I know that it is with me. So I'm, I, I'm just kind of wondering how is that for you to, how do you deal with the difficulties in life? Yeah. Well, Hmm. So for those who don't know, my mom passed away this summer and it wasn't the easiest thing. And I don't want to give the cliche answer or anything, but mm -hmm. my friends and family were there to support me. It comes down to that. My dad, he was there for me. He was talking to me. Anytime I needed help, he was there. Uh, everyone in the Shot From The Point team, including you, Dave, you texted me almost every day to find out how I was. Yeah. And it's, it's shit like that. That's what helps me. And it's mostly a time thing. It's time that's going to get you through it. Yeah. You're going to learn to accept it over time. And I think I've come to a point where I pretty much accepted it already. Wow. Yeah. Every single guy on the team, like Jeff, Jake, Tommy, all of yous, uh, you, are, you guys were there. You're the well, best. We all love you to death, man. And, yeah. you know, we, we got a lot of questions from, from people, you know, when you were missing time and everything. And when, mm. the, when what happened came out, you know, uh, when... We, you revealed that your mom had passed away. Everybody just felt for you. Is everybody loved you so much, man? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad you were that you felt that, and I'm I'm glad that it helped. So, yep. All right, now not an easy thing to smoothly transition uh, to. So <laughs> what I've decided is I'm going to follow that question up with the most awkward and weird thing I could possibly come up with. So question number four. I'll probably find it normal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to know. Yeah. What is it about former Canadian P.K. Subban? What is it about him that makes you want to have his babies? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You have a love so. of P.K., man. What is the deal with your, with your love affair with P.K. Subban? Well, common misconception, actually... He's not even my favorite player on the Canadians. Oh, good I think God. it's just Tommy who's, who spread this rumor that I'm in love with him. <laughs> but I I saw him playing junior. I saw him playing the World Juniors. I saw his first game ever live. Mm -hmm. And I bought his jersey before anyone knew him. People in Quebec were going up to me like, who's that? Is that a new player? <laughs> we don't know about him. So I guess that storm of perfect events made it that I was always super attached to him. P.S. We both have the same birthday, May oh. 13th. And his brother has the same birthday as my brother, December 21st. Oh. So <laughs> I, the problem is I made one huge mistake. Mm -hmm. um, there is these girls in my high school, these typical bitches who drink pumpkin spice latte drinks 
Don't knock if um, you tried, buddy. Starbucks is coming <laughs> back here. It's a fall. You're going to get Sorry. a pumpkin spice latte. No, I've never had one yeah. either. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I started talking to them about Subban. And the way I was describing him, his, I don't know, his lips, <laughs> they thought I was gay for him. <laughs> well, so... <laughs> well, Matt, <laughs> they'll try not describing a man's lips and maybe you won't have that issue. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll try next. You see, it's a learning process with me. I'll do errors, <laughs> but I won't repeat them again. Usually that's not a step in the process. Usually like, okay, now I've learned not to describe another man's lips to a girl. Yeah. And I'll, now I, it's in the bank. I've learned yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, but it's also like in my culture, it's okay to hold another guy's hand. I remember when I was young, my dad tried to hold my hand and I was like, dude, what the hell? Why are you trying to touch me? What is this? So sometimes when I compliment someone's lips, I don't realize it that over here it could be considered overtly gay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're like licking your lips the entire time you're describing, which I'm having a feeling you are like, and the way he listens when he comes <laughs> off the ice. He's well, that's an just how I think it. Or God. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel that he's no longer there? This is a this is an add on to that last question. Yeah, you took PK leaving rather hard. I re I heard the audio clips. I, he's no longer there. Are you over it already? Um, I'm getting. <laughs> I'm still. I I told you it takes time. It takes time. I I accepted my mom passing away. I still haven't accepted this. So I know. You, you know I, I, I'm sitting here, and that's why I'm laughing so hard, is I'm like, he just said a second ago that he accepted his mother passing away, and now he's having a longer time accepting that PK got traded for yeah. Shea fucking Weber. This yeah. is wonderful. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to miss those lips. <laughs> You're a hockey guy, man. You do love some hockey. And, yeah. Um, I love hockey. At least he won't be treated poorly by the terrible quebecian media anymore so that's good right that's that's the worst thing i opened my phone this morning and they're complaining to him because he i guess he photoshopped the logo off his helmet so yeah. everything he does if you were to fart in the locker room yeah. it'd be on the headlines it, no no athlete deserves that so no but look. he's a talented young black man in a typically white man's game and regardless yeah. if you believe that that has a resounding reason as to why he's going to be a lightning rod he it's at least going to be a reason we, whether or not yeah. it's big or not it is going to be a reason why he's a lightning rod he's a young talented black man in a white man's game it's just exactly. predominantly white yeah and he's not going to be like a gamla who is really a humble guy he's flashy yeah and just there's, there's nothing wrong with that it's just who he is it just rubs off players it rubs off his own it, it ticks off his own team yeah it ticks off the media and look good luck in nashville buddy those are horrible jerseys by the way <laughs> it looks like there was a mustard incident in the locker <laughs> that color combination <laughs> will not look good oh. with his ebony skin <laughs> it, oh god oh how wonderful uh all right that's what that's great <laughs> all right <laughs> question number five the fifth and final question. Now, we already kind of talked about how you're not going to be moving away from podcasting or anything. But now I kind of want to hit that even harder with this. You've got this can't miss shtick and gimmick. Whether it's natural or whether it's a little bit put on, that's who cares. No one ever needs to know if that is the case. Even though I tried to get it out of you in the very first question of this very show. So the question is... And it's more of a pleading from me. Tell me that there is a plan in place, even with you getting your pharmaceutical degree, to do more podcasting. That you're going to, in the next year, we're going to see the Matt Kazar show, something happening going forward. Because I'm telling you, man, I understand where your dad's coming from. But you've got a yeah. special quality that will at least get you over to a mass amount of people in YouTube. See, like me... Tommy C, guys like that, we're not mass appeal guys. Tommy's always going to put people off because of his New Yorkian thing. He's going to play to a large, sensible crowd and stuff because, you know, a lot of East Coasters listen to stuff like that. So 
they're they're with it. Me, I I'm fat, so I'm fucked. You have got this wonderful balance of so many things. You are a good god. You're a good-looking kid. You have an amazing speaking ability. You're smart, you're witty, you're funny. You are a can't miss goddamn prospect. If I was drafting a YouTube team, you would be my top overall pick because you have those abilities. So please tell me we're going to be getting something more out of you in the next year when it comes to podcasting. Mecca Matt ain't going anywhere, baby. That's fucking the, right. The, Boom. The, right in the baby maker. I, it's right now I'm in pain because I've had so much work at school. Yeah. It's my graduate program. It's And I see everyone and I'm like, God, I want to be there with you guys. But I've had so much work and I've started doing videos myself. I have a channel and with zero videos. I've started making videos, but I've abandoned halfway just because when I'm almost done, a teacher would give me a huge project to do. <laughs> but I'm telling you, whenever I have a free time, I am going to give everything I got. God. Both uh, both as financially and whatever. I'm going to do everything. For the That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because we definitely want to see that. And if there's anything I could do to help that process along, you make sure you tell me, okay? Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking and about. And don't, don't call yourself fat anymore. You're you're becoming Slim Jim now. I, I'm, you, I'm you've lost all that weight. I'm still fat as hell. I got a long way to go, but I appreciate that. Well, you're not as fat as before, I guess. I yes. don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm not as yeah. fat. <laughs> I am yeah. still fat, but not as fat. That's true. And I am on the right path, so I appreciate that. Okay. Those were all five of my questions, and I think that you answered them all wonderfully. So, I leave it to you. I think you've earned this uh, right. Ask any question you like, and I will answer it 100% honestly. All right. And, like, one question... One question, and you know, I mean, if if it's a okay. if it's a two parter or whatever, I'm okay with that. But you know, yeah. don't try to get me to assemble a baseball team like Frenchy fucking <laughs> Ben did the other night. Jesus. Huh. Huh. Hey, Dave, what I want from you is to tell me your all time greatest baseball team with players <laughs> who have only lived during your lifetime. I'm like, what? That's oh. a, that's an hour long show, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. So as long as you don't have something like that, we're good. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't think of a question. Hold on, let me think. Chef prepared. All right, so every guy has one pass, one exception. Another guy that they would fuck. It doesn't mean they're gay, uh-huh. but there's, there's that one guy they'll make an exception for. Mm-hmm. Mine is the singer of My Chemical Romance. Okay. Who would be yours? Well, I've had no problems embracing my sexuality. I, uh, I've said this on my channel many, many times that I would let Roman Reigns wear me like a canoe. I would let him <laughs> hollow me out. I have no problem with that. Uh, I've had many man crushes in my life. David Boreanaz was... One of my first. I yeah. uh, love David Boreanaz. Yeah. That's a good looking guy, man. Angel, come on, dude. And get, it, get the fuck yeah. out of here. Uh, Richard Gere. I, that man aged about as well. I mean, he's been great since he was like 25 years old, but just this magnificent nobility about his looks. He's another one. Basically, I'm just, I can go through a yeah. list of all the guys that I would let fuck me in the ass, basically. I mean, that's where I'm, that's where I'm going with this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, currently, I don't give a shit about his wrestling ability and anything like that. Roman Reigns, that is a good-looking man. So, it's Roman Reigns. Yeah. Yeah, you see, I wouldn't go for a, a wrestler because he'd probably bruise me and I wouldn't be able to walk. So, I go for the more feminine rock star type. <laughs> I'd go for the Freddie Mercury type. That's where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. He has a mustache. And that shit's prickly. My dad has a mustache. <laughs> and every time he tries to kiss me, it's like, ooh. <laughs> oh, my God. My dad, when I was young, he had the weirdest, he'd do the weirdest thing. He'd come up to me and just sniff the top of my head. He'd just do like, 
Ah, you know, child just, services are being called. I don't care that you're like 20 <laughs> now. You know that it's happening. Somebody's like, oh, God. Sniffing and your head? Like, I love the smell of you. And I'd be like, dude, I didn't shower for a week. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Holy God. Oh, the, the natural fragrance of Mac is on. Yeah. The natural juices. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes, uh, usually not something that you would want to associate with your father, but hey, you know, <laughs> I am not one to judge. I don't know Canadian culture. I'm just, yeah. I'm just a Chicago it, boy. It, what can I say? It's a nothing culture. That's just <laughs> him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty awesome, man. Uh, yeah. Hey, look, I think that was wonderful. I appreciate uh, you being here and answering all the questions wonderfully. Is there anything else that you would like to tell the people about what's going on in your life? Anything that you want to? plug or anything like that or anything else you want to talk about before we get out of here yeah well like i said you wrestling fucks you probably don't know much about me and i know there's a lot of new people i saw from the point you don't know about me but i'll be there soon give yeah. me the time the and i finish work i'll be there that's and what i'm talking about thanks for help uh, thanks for having me it's no been problem, a lot man. of fun I i'm hoping to fun. get you on this channel more often as well in the future so Hopefully we'll yep. be able to do that. Matt, I appreciate it. Thank you for your time, buddy. And have you. yourself a wonderful evening. I hope everybody out there has a wonderful evening as well. Thank you very much for joining us right here on 5 Random Questions on the Dead on Dave Productions. Like, subscribe, and share. And remember, as always, if you don't have talent, have talented friends like a Matt Kizar. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Keep it copious, folks. Peace.